All right, now we are apparently inside of a cabin of a plane that appears to be some sort of corporate. This is definitely a luxurious private airplane. In fact, it is the first private airplane. Of course, I'm talking about the Gulfstream Mach. One, the Grumman G159, which kind of started it all, the whole Gulfstream brand, which, you know, later turned into private jets, you know, like G6. You know, it is a new model we have now for the Microsoft Flight Simulator. It is freeware and it, 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 it kind of, it is some pretty good, some interesting artifacts here in the outside model of the Bon Jovi plane. Yes, the band Bon Jovi had a G159. Yes, of course, once again, very luxurious. I think they later, you know, switched to a 727 and crashed it. Very good. Anyway, pretty okay modeling. For some reason, this airplane doesn't appear to have windows. It doesn't look like wind. That windows? No. Anyway, once again, this airplane flew for the first time in the late 50s, 1958. Definitely came out earlier than the first business jets, you know, maybe like the Learjet, which flew in like 1963. These airplanes weren't too good, these jets, man. The first private jets, they were very crammed, not very luxurious. They were just fast. This airplane, on the other hand, wasn't all too fast. In fact, it could fly at relatively low speeds which might be an advantage here at this mountain air airport. And while it definitely was comfortable, you know, it really did take a while for private jets to become comfortable. Indeed, here we are now. We're kind of running over the sign. Yeah. Whoopsie. Kind of trimming the grass here. Let me take off with our Bon Jovi G159. Here we have the cockpit here, which for the 1950s is quite sophisticated. Pretty well done. You know, not bad. They really made sure to make uh, to make a good airplane. Now we go to just open the gust lock. That's what you're supposed to do. Let's go ahead and take off here once again from Mountain Air Airport. This airplane isn't even too small, is it? Look, we've crashed our wing already into Jesus. All right, there we go. Now take off. We've got a lot of flaps here. Very low down flap, which is good. We need them. Please take off successfully. Don't you dare die. And it it has not died, everybody. Yes, we can put the landing gear up in our kind of first business travel. Airplane landing gear comes up wonderfully. And now we are on board. And of course, since we carry a rock band on board, we can consume all bunch of drugs in the back. Very nice. I mean, look at this curtain. Curtain opens and closes. Because you don't want to see what's going on behind there. Sometimes this is the kitchen. All the cocaine is stored in here. <laughs> Let me see. Is there a bathroom? That's kind of a... No. You just kind of enter the matrix. And you can see one of the other novelties of this plane. This plane was a plane of firsts. As, as you can see, indeed, it had an APU. And it was the first airplane to have such an APU, which is quite nice. And here we are. We are flying indeed. And this thing's got some good performance. Not bad at all. I think it's interesting. I mean, this plane is still flying around today. It's kind of like those legendary designs. Some things just never change. The Cessna 737. Although we might want to put an end to that misery. There we go. Let me go ahead and fly to somewhere else. Let's take a look at one of the other liveries we have. TAS Airways. Okay, good. All right. So we are flying. This appears to be somewhat Italian. Italian Mafia. Okay, let's go ahead and now land at St. Bartholomew. That's like a rock star kind of island, I think. Go ahead and put the flaps down here once again. I mean, if I was like a famous celebrity back in the 50s and 60s and 70s, and I had the question of, well, which airplane am I going to buy? Am I going to buy a fast one that kind of sucks? Or am I going to buy a comfortable one like this G159 that's only slightly slower? I think I would have taken this thing. No, just, no, just kidding. I would have taken the jet. But <laughs> what am I even talking about? Let's go ahead and land. So far, this add-on, once again, seems a little okay. I mean, this is free. If I had paid for it, though, I would be very mad. I think that kind of logic Fox, works. Fox truck, Julia, Shut up. You're absolutely going to be fine. Let's go ahead and actually t land now. We're a little fast, actually. This airplane... <laughs> this airplane, once again, has the capability to fly much slower. Stop now. And it stops quickly. We've, of course, got reverse thrust. That's very typical of, of this kind of airplane. And there we go. This airplane's got some really good performance to it. I mean, yes, the physics might not be super realistic. I mean, if I bought an airplane that had panel gaps like this, I'd be quite pissed. You know. But everybody, once again, the performance of this airplane isn't bad at all. And it's interesting how, you know, this is a plane from the 1950s. I mean, it was the first Gulfstream ever. And the Gulfstreams all still kind of look the same. I mean, look at the window. I mean, it's kind of state. This incredible circle. Like this, you know. 
still still the same. It's quite interesting. Let me go ahead and do some more performance testing as this one has worked out very, very well. And you know, while planning this video, I kind of was already excited to, you know, put something in the title like, oh, dangerous airplane. Because being, you know, dangerous is kind of one of the biggest problems of being the first <laughs> at something, right? But the thing is, the Ghostream Mark 1 was insanely reliable and not dangerous at all. Yes, of course, there were a few crashes. But the Zerg plane is in no way a widow maker of any sort. Shut up! No, the Zerg plane is actually insanely reliable. Everybody loved this plane who flew it. Let me actually try to get off here, by the way. Yes! In fact, I'm starting to love it too. There we go. We just took off beautifully from Sabah Airport. I mean, it's a turboprop. And that's definitely the advantages of having a turboprop. It has a good performance. Yes, overall, I couldn't find many crashes at all online. Maybe that's also because there were not many built. Only 200 of these were built ever, which isn't particularly extraordinary. But again, you know, pilots love this plane. It was very ahead of its time. I mean, take a look at this cockpit. Really not bad for the 50s. We've got beautiful view of everything. Let's go ahead and land here. If this works, and I'm going to make this airplane switch, is there one approved something? All right, let's actually test out the slow flying capabilities. We're at 100 knots. This airplane can fly insanely slowly. That's actually quite ridiculous. There we go. I mean, this is airliner slot sized. All right. Okay, we didn't see that. What the hell just happened? Did I touch down too? I might have done that. Everybody, we've landed at Sabah Airport. With this plane, that's pretty big. It might actually, it might actually be a bit bigger than I thought. Maybe this is unrealistically big. Yes, people said that here. The plane's too big, scale 2 to 1. And I, I'm starting to get what they mean, especially now here. Compare that to this B and 2 Islander. Literally, this thing is the size of a 737. Hmm. I mean, yes. Convert that airplane to like a normal person, which would be probably this tall as this mouse cursor. That is a bit off. One and a half. This airplane is way too small. I've just started to realize that here at Sabah Airport. I mean, I've stood here. This is, hmm. what, what the hell? Like, genuinely, this thing looks like a giant here at Lukla Airport. Let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and take off here. Let's go into work here. All right. I mean, yes, this airplane might have the physics of, uh, uh RC plane. It might not also be very much to scale either. Uh, but this is, uh, I mean, this is free, you know? There you go, we've taken off. The landing will definitely work too. There you go. Beautiful. Nice. Stop. Easily. Beautiful. Good. Just like that. That's exactly what I want to see. I mean, the wings are cut off, but that's fine. But overall, this is an alright airplane. If you want to have a plane that literally flies anywhere and it's very forgiving, this is, uh, this is good enough. So, I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters. <laughs> Guns Killer, R27, James Duram, that dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishititsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.